page fans, people into web, it's me, Zorish one back for another Snapchat, the official Snapchat's collection. This time we're doing 83, the Bajoran Assault Vessel. Now, my this is the second take of this video, because my computer decided to erase said video. Um, I'm not sure how, um, but I've got to do it again. So, as per usual, you get your nice glossy magazine and the ship itself, but more on that in a little bit. So, we get on to specifications. Bajoran assault vessel, operated by the Bajoran militia. Type of troop transport, in operation 24th century. Length, 140.72 uh, metres. Uh, propulsion impulse, crew, 12 flight, 12 flight crew and 200 troops. Weaponry phaser emitters. Now, the troop transport, a bit of a contention, particularly particularly with me and um, this is more like it says an assault vessel so I would imagine it's very much like a bird of prey probably not as powerful but you know it's that kind of strike in out you know do the damage and get out again ship um, but anyway and then we've got the really nice uh, bottom view of the ship there um, of course it goes into the history like I say I don't, don't read the uh, I don't read these out because I want you to read the magazine. I actually read the bullet points and stuff. Um, the Bajoran assault vessel had pronounced downward swept wings which helped, which helped to keep it stable. Planetary atmospheres. Uh, it also featured uh, lift engines underside of its wings which allowed it to hover and set down vertically on, on a planet's surface. This, um, this facility was especially useful when needing to deploy troops quickly. Um... When they were young, Jake Sisko and Nog spent hours on Deep Space Nine watching the Bajoran families board the Bajoran vessels at Station's airlocks. And then we've got various images of the ship itself. We've got the same one from the front cover, but that's no bad thing. Um, we've got one attacking a Galar class warship from the TNG episode, Preemptive Strike. But I think it's supposed to be a small Federation ship rather than a Bajoran. Um, uh, ship but then again it could be Bajoran we're not quite sure and then we've got one from the mirror universe that the Terran stole um, and then we've got Kirin Commander 1 when she's orbiting the moon Gerada. is it Gerada? Oh, excuse me um, I think it's Gerada. I can't quite remember. And then we've got the um, then we've got the topographical scan there, which is really nice, uh, really cool. Highlighting various areas of the ship. Um, several assault vessels, alongside the larger freighter-like ships, made us made up a small fleet, which uh, formed a blockade to stop Romulan warbird delivering. Armaments to Bajoran Moon. Um, uh, the Bajorans operated very few warp capable starships in the 24th century. They did possess some multi purpose warp ships that were approximately 260 metres in length. They were used for scouting, transport, and defensive purposes in 2375. Several of these vessels were used in conjunction with the assault vessels to form a blockade of Dana. That's the last the moon. Uh, against the Romulans. Bajor was one of the oldest civilizations in the Alpha Quadrant. Uh, it began to flourish about a million years ago. The Bajorans were renowned for their flair of science and the arts, along with long before humans began uh, to speak or make tools. Uh, according to, to Kieran Arise, the Bajorans had had not had. Hang on. According to Kieran Arise, the Bajorans did not have any type of ship that was com comparably Maneuverability, comparable in its maneuverability and offensive systems, capable of Starfleet run, uh, offensive capabilities to a Starfleet runabout. I can't talk. What's going on? Um, the Bajoran system was fifty-two light years from Earth and contained fourteen planets. Bajo, the eleventh and largest planet of the system, had five moons, including Dana and Gerado. The Bajoran worm was located near the Denorius Belt. Between the ninth and tenth planets of the system. Mm. So, Beijing, eleventh planet. That's quite a big, quite a big system. I and mean, if you think about the distance between, 
you know, in our solar system, you've got the Sun, then you've got uh, Mercury, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, Uranus, Pluto. Um, I mentioned Pluto um, just for the size difference. It's not a planet, it's a, it's a Kuiper Belt object. But, so there's eight planets and the Kuiper Belt object, Pluto. That's some distance. And that's, you know, where the ninth planet was. So imagine 11 planets, or 14 planets in this case. That's some distance in the system. Also, um, it... it Unless the unless the distances are shorter, um, but it also uh, indicates that the Bajoran sun is very very hot, and uh, Bajor, being the eleventh planet, is in its habitable zone, and we're the third planet of our solar system, and we're in the habitable zone. So yeah. Uh, anyway, I'm probably in all about planets there, and then we've got um, the designing. Um, this is a um, who was it designed by uh, Jim Martin. It looks like a Gemadar attack ship um, in that picture. So we've got some beautiful designs there. Um, a design that looks more like the sub impulse threat, uh, impulse fighter there. Um, I think they use, might use that design on, on Voyager, um, you know, for a background ship somewhere. You never know. It does look familiar. Um, like I say, we've got the what. It's almost the same design as, as what we've got now, just that these added these extra wing bits and this bit's a bit fatter in the middle. Um, like I say, it does look more like a Gemini warship in that picture. Um, I do like these uh, design drawings and stuff. They're really cool. Um, and then we've got the um, plans of the ship there. You can see the ship pretty much being what it is there. But it's a bit wider in this section, so this looks like they've taken these sections off here and just thinned out this bit, the cockpit section here. Like I say, this section looks more like a Gemini attack ship. And then we've got pictures of the actual studio model, um, which is really cool. And it's even got cockpit in there. Um, really cool, really cool, really cool, really cool. Um, and then we've got the Bajoran timeline, um, starting at 5,000 years ago. Uh, no, sorry, 50,000 years ago. Um, and it's going through all the various um, historical events, you know, the um, descending of the orbs to the Bajoran people. You've got uh, the city of Balhalla. You've got uh, Akoram Lan and his um, solar sailor ship, which we've had previously. Um, quite an early issue, actually. I think it might have been issue something like 15 or 16, something like that. And then it goes into modern history and the Cardassian occupation and then Starfleet taking over the station. Um, some more pictures there. And then it goes into the sort of hit course of Deep Space Nine pretty much there. Which is pretty cool. And then we've got um, on screen. Apparently first appearance is First Strike TNG. Um, which is the Siege, I think. If you go in, I think Stardate order... I think the siege comes first. Um, I'll have to check. I'm not quite sure um, because preemptive strike. Although that airs first, I think the siege should be first. If you know what I mean. Um, anyway, uh, trivia: uh, the Bajoran assault vessel was one of the last physical studio models to be transformed by Effects House Digital Muse into a CG model for Star Trek: Deep Space Nine episode Shadows and Symbols. Curiously. Um, it, it appears. Uh, uh, bleh. <coughs> Excuse me. It appears that both the physical model and the CG model were used in this episode, almost identical shots. Um, the physical model was sold at the Forty Years of Star Trek collection in two thousand and six. Oh, ten years ago, Jesus. Uh, Five thousand four hundred American dollar to, to collector Adam Schneider. Um, a few months after Shadows and Symbols was aired, the desert filming location at the surface of Tyree was again used as a desert landscape for the Voyager episode, a Delta Quadrant planet in the Star Trek Voyager episode of Gravity, where a shuttle crash landed. Um, Star Trek Deep Space Nine, the siege concluded um, the first ever three part Star Trek story. Um, no more three parts were produced until Star Trek Enterprise and the subject of these story arcs dealt with Dr. Sung's augments and the Vulcan reform, reformation and the Romulans plot to incite a war between their key rivals. And then we've got a uh, top view on the back of there. So, on to the model itself. And I think you'll agree, this is a nice one. 
it's a really, really, really nice one. Nice to see some Bajoran ships. Um, like I said, this has never been given a model apart from, I think, um, Attack Wing. You can get these in Attack Wing. Um, but yeah, they're really cool. I do like this these sections under here. They're looking more gold on this camera, all these sections here. They're more sort of a copper colour. Um, then you've got these like terracotta colours here, and I love all this panel work. That looks absolutely fantastic. And you can see the uh, thrust jets there. Um, I believe these are phaser mirrors. And I do like these shiny um, purple strips there. That's quite nice. Um, you could, the join line is not too bad on this one. Um, I think mine is just a little bit off. Um, yeah, it's just a tiny bit out, but never mind. Because the bottom you don't really see. Although mine, this section in the middle... Is a little bit loose, a little bit annoyed about that, but you know it's not too bad. Um, like I say, you've got some really nice panel work on the top there, some really nice uh, details. What you what you would call greeblies, they're really cool. Um, nice nice big cockpit there. This is going to look great in my alien ships, uh, particularly next to my um, uh, Bajoran um, impulse for uh, impulse uh, fire. Just really cool, really nice. Um, if you're a Deep Space Nine fan, this is definitely a must. Um, like I say, if you're cherry picking these, this is definitely a must. It's a really nice, uh, really well put together ship, designed really well. Um, like I say, it's like a Bajoran version of a bed of prayer, like a Klingon bed of prayer, which is really cool. You know, um, yeah. If like I say, if you're a Deep Space Nine fan, get it. If you're a Bajoran fan, get it. If you're just a fan of cool ships, get it. Um, if you're a fan of Star Trek, get it. It's a really nice one this time. Well done, lads. Hats off. Um, and, of course, you get the black stand, which just says um, Bajoran Assault Vessel. Plastic connector, and it connects. Really nice, really snug, thus. Um, and it's really nice on the stand. It looks really cool. Um, so that's me. That's Bajoran Assault Vessel. Catch you next time. And I shall catch you later. Bye for now.